Hi, I'm Toby Kirk, and in this video I'm going to give you an overview of the modelling work on electrode heterogeneity in lithium-ion batteries that I completed during the course of the Faraday project. First, the structure of this presentation, beginning with the motivation and what I mean by heterogeneity, that is, particle size distributions. I'll then describe how we modelled it with the so-called many-particle model. I'll go over the main results, which includes the reduction to single particle models, and finish with a mention of the model extension and an, and an experimental phenomenon it can explain. This is work supervised by Colin Please and John Chapman and Jack Evans, all at the University of Oxford. The motivation. In the commonly used physical continuum models of a lithium ion cell, such as the benchmark Doyle Fuller Newman model, or DFN for short, the active particles are all assumed to be the same size and shape. The same is obviously true for the single particle model, or SPM, which assumes all particles in, the, in an electrode behave in unison, so you only model one representative particle. Assuming only one size is just done for computational simplicity, since in reality things are much messier heterogeneous. The active particles are polydisperse, meaning a wide range of sizes are present. There are all different shapes, and there are other components not modelled, such as binder and carbon black. There are several paths or approaches to including this heter heterogeneity in models. One way is to fully resolve the model microstructure, informed by X-ray CT scans. This is very, this is the most accurate but it's very computationally intensive and it's difficult to model an entire cell this way. The second way is to extend the microscale problem in the pseudo two-dimensional framework of the DFN and therefore maintaining some of its advantages. We are focused on this second way and on the effects of a distribution of particle sizes in the microscale problem. The particle size distributions or PSDs are actually commonly measured and you can have some control over them in the manufacturing process even. They could well play an important role in degradation and change a cell's life, change over, over a cell's life if larger particles crack and disintegrate, such as for NMC. They can also be multimodal, meaning they have, have more than one local maximum, and this turns out to be an important aspect one should account for when modeling them in this context. So, what are some of the key questions that one would ask? What effect does a PSD and its shape have on cell behavior? Can we derive simple accurate models such as sing single particle models or similar to best capture this behavior? And how would you design your PSD to maximize performance such as power? So the modeling. The main model that we considered we refer to as the many particle model. That's because it is a direct extension of the single particle model to many sized particles. It assumes that the transport of ions through the electrolyte is fast. So all the particles of the same size behave in the same way, behave in unison, even if they're at different cell locations. Different sizes behave differently. So you need a representative particle of each size. So given a PSD, which is prescribed, the model consists, in words, of spherical diffusion of lithium for each particle size and a uniform electric potential across them all. We assume butler volmer kinetics and the total reaction rate across all the particles summed up produces the circuit current. For the equations and technical de details, I refer you to the paper, which we will give you the details for at the end. Numerically, we use a finite volume discretization and an adapted time stepper in MATLAB. And we use log normal PSDs, which are typical. And a bimodal PSD is made up from two log normal components added up. For the results, we focused on constant current discharges of half cells. For unimodal PSDs, those with a single peak, we found two main effects of the PSD shape. Increasing the variance 
but fixing its mean, therefore only changing its shape or its spread, smooths the voltage, shown here on the top right. Secondly, it decreases the usable capacity or the discharge capacity at the cutoff. This is due to larger particles being underutilized. As far as reduced order models, we explored single particle models for various choices of mean radius. We found that they cannot capture the smoothing effects, but they can capture the capacity decrease if the correct radius is used, which we identify based on the use case. To capture the smoothing effect, we derived a correction valid for narrow PSTs, which agrees better with the full many many particle model. For bimodal PSDs, the general findings were that a double particle model works well, provided the modes are sufficiently separated. Then a staggered or irregular discharge is possible if the OCV is nonlinear, such as the case for graphite. The spread around each mode is then only a secondary effect. We also made some specific comparisons to experiments on lithium ion phosphate, clearly demonstrating the effect of bimodal PSDs. A bimodal PSD can be made mixing a, by mixing a source of small particles and a source of large particles. Only the mixture exhibits a step in the discharge curve. Shown here, between two plateaus, and this is captured by the model. In general, we can say that the number of voltage plateaus you get is equal to the number of modes. Finally, we demonstrate that PSTs are important to battery behavior in another way, the voltage relaxation. This occurs commonly after a discharge, where the current is switched off and the cell relaxes to a steady state. The DFN model, the benchmark model, using only a single particle size in each electrode, over, over predicts this relaxation speed, which is seen in many recent studies. However, a many particle DFN, so an extension of DFN, to have particle size distributions in both electrodes and at every cell location, can fit this slow relaxation due to its larger internal concentration gradients present at cutoff. In conclusion, we have shown that particle size distributions, both uni and bimodal, can have a significant impact on cell dynamics. Their behavior can be well represented by a single particle model or double, with their right choice of radius, which we identify. We derived a correction to capture the effects that that SPM alone cannot. And introducing multiple sizes can explain voltage behavior readily seen in experiments. The many particle and many particle DFN models have been implemented in PyBAM, the flexible common modeling framework, and will, be, and will be available in the near future. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to answering your questions at the Q&A on the 26th.